Hello, I'll show you how to easily manage constant contact email lists in Sugar. You can do that through multiple modules, as you can see the accounts, contacts, leads, target lists, and targets module. I'm going to show you how to read the campaign results, as well as how to run reports on those campaign results. So, I'll just go ahead and just if you could pass me control. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and show my screen. Can everybody uh, see my screen? Yeah, we can see it. Fantastic. All right, so you guys are probably fairly familiar with, just minimizing, that's minimizing. There we go. So you guys are probably fairly familiar with this first screen, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to add people to a constant contact list. You can do that again in the accounts, contacts, leads, targets list, and targets module. So the easy thing to do is just to click on contact and you'll see right here that we have a constant contact audit log as well as a constant contact target lists. Now from here you just click on the action menu you go to link an existing record like you do with any other sub panel and it will list not only all the constant contact lists but also any other target list you have. So you just pick and choose which ones you want to add them to and click link. So that is the easiest way to do it, and you can do this for individual contacts, or you can add multiple contacts, accounts, or leads to a single target list. So from the target list module, you can go ahead and select a target list you want to add people to, and go through the same process. You can go through contacts, linking multiple people, as well as you go through accounts, users, pretty much anything that's linked to the target list module, you can go ahead and add to a single target list. So I can see we've kind of built up this Oracle test list with several contacts and at least one account. And this is the easiest way to do it. And you don't actually have to go to constant contact at all to add lists. You can do this all through Sugar. And when the sync happens, all these new names, whether they're a contact name or an account name or a target name, they will all be synced to constant contact and added to the various email lists. So again, in constant contact, these would be called an email list. But in Sugar, they are a target list. Now, the other point we were going to show you is how to view campaign results and how to understand them. So after you do these target lists, your constant contact will create an email blast and send out all these emails and you will get results back depending on what people do, whether they click on the email, whether they forward it, whether it gets bounced or spammed. And all the information does come back to constant contact and is then synced down to sugar. So here in the campaigns module, let's see we have quite a few campaigns listed. And let's just go look at the survey. So we created this survey, it was an email blast, and you can see some information just on the very first screen. The impressions right here, this is the number of emails that got sent. So this would be to the number of contacts you have in your particular email list. Now again, a campaign can be multiple email lists, and that will be shown later. For this particular one, we had a single target list that was applied, and this email list obviously got sent multiple times. So you can also see here just some regular text information, the number of clicks, people who opted out, people who opened it. Those that bounced, and this could be bounced for a number of reasons, could be an invalid email, it could be spammed. You can see the spam report right here. Some spam reporters for some email services will just throw it as a bounced email. They won't report back that it's been spammed. Now you can also get more detailed information than you just see on this very first screen. And to do that, you click on the view status. And the view status is going to pull up a lot more information from this particular campaign. So in this case, since all of mine are underneath a contacts, you'll see that it's just blue for contacts. But many of you will have people in your target list that come from different modules like users, prospects, leads, and accounts. So when you have that, you'll get different color bars to show you what kind of information was being sent to which of your targets or which of your records. So for mine, it's all going to be blue because they're all in their contacts. But you can see, again, this is a graphical version of the information we saw on the first page. Now, the more fun information is down here. It'll tell you exactly who the messages were sent to and who they were attempted. You can see we sent or attempted up to 1,700 messages. You can see which people actually viewed the message. Now, if your message contained the link, 
you'll see which people clicked through and actually clicked on the link. And you'll see why the messages were bounced. You can see this right here is invalid email. And you can see these messages were bounced for other. And again, other could be spam. It could be that the person's firewall doesn't let it in, so it's not even an invalid email, just so much as it doesn't actually get to its final destination. So you can see which of these people, and you can actually then decide if you want to contact these people to get their correct email or to find out if they rather opt out. You can see no one really opted out of this list. And you can see also if you have this particular campaign is linked to any account, you can see that information here as well. So this is a really detailed view of how you get to see, of how your results are which for many people is going to be very important to see how well your campaign results are doing. Now to run a report on that, just go to the reports module, and I've actually created one for this demo, and I want to get a report based on the number of clicks. So I'm not really concerned with the number of opens or bounces, I just wanted to know how many people clicked that was greater than 30. So you see we had from the list of campaigns I have, we had three that had over 30 clicks. And so some of you may have more, you can always change this depending on how you set up your reports. And you get more information. So this would be an easy way if you wanted to figure out which of your campaigns has is the most effective, or you can create a different report that shows you how many were bounced, how many were forwarded, how many were open, so you can really you can really tell which of your campaigns is getting the most results for you, and maybe you can use that information to replicate it or to create more campaigns that get you more results and obviously more business. Now, at this time, let me check the chat log. Does anybody have any questions? Let's see. Not yet, Todd. But if anyone does have a question, like I said. Pop them in the chat, and we'll get to those. Okay. Well, if we don't have any questions at the moment, I'm going to go show you some of the things that you may want to use if you're the sugar admin for Constant Contact. So for that, we'll just go to the Constant Contact. And in here, this is where you get to set some of the settings. So for me, I've set all my imported leads to have email as their default lead source. You know, we provide quite a few out-of-the-box standard, so you can go as a cold call, existing customer, self-generated, so on and so forth. I've also decided that I want to sync the campaign events, as well as I want to automatically sync all my constant contact contacts to Sugar, and then this lets me pick which module I want to put it into. So for my instance, I put it into contacts, and this is just a default setting, so if you have a, if you're just starting to use Sugar or you just want to use the integration, you want to pull all your contacts down, you can stick them into any of these four modules. And I'll make do that on the sync. We also have over here in the advanced tab where a lot of the, this is how you would come here to force a sync or to make a sync occur faster than the automated. A lot of our automated syncs happen either every two hours or every 12 hours. And one sync happens every 24. So if you just want to get the, the list names, you click this one. So this would bring down just the names of your constant contact lists. And that's it. So no other real information. This is so you can pick and choose which ones you want to view, or maybe you have only lists but no names in it, or maybe you don't want to sync down the contacts. You just want to add contacts to constant contact. You would click this, so you get all your lists. This one right here, the download CC campaign and numerical results. This will provide just the, numeric, the numerical results from the campaign. Let me show you what that means. Sorry, and get the most more recent one that we are using. So this information right here, just the number of clicks, opens, bounces, spams, and opt-outs, this would be the numerical results. So this is a very quick sync. So if you just want to know immediately how well your campaign is doing, you don't really want the specific information, you can come here and click download campaigns and this will bring down just those numerical results. And this force full detail campaign sync, what this will do is ensure that if for any reason you think that one of some of your campaigns aren't getting all their detailed information, and again, that detailed information is underneath the view status. That would be the people who have the message been sent to, who's clicked on it, who's read it. That's what this would do. So this would ensure that all your campaigns will get the most up-to-date information because for most of our syncs, it only looks at the most recent 90 days. So if you're ever concerned that you need to get every single campaign result, you'd want to do this one. 
And the rest of this is for contact. Sorry about that, folks. Let me just go ahead and move this off to the side. Anyway, if you want to get all your campaign, you can set the force of full sync from constant contact. Or if you want to force a full contact sync to constant contact, that's where you do this. And then the automatic contact sync. This will run and sync everything. So this is for all the contacts and this will also trigger the campaign results. Now you don't have to do any of this if you want to just update a single constant contact list. If you want to do that and you, maybe you've added some names and you want to make sure that they get put in right away, you don't want to, if you don't want to wait for the automatic sync to occur every two hours, you can do that right away by opening that particular list. So we were doing the Oracle test list. So if you guys remember earlier, I added quite a few contacts in at least one account. And so I want to make sure that all this information gets put over right now because I'm dealing with it right now. You just click on the action menu and you click the sync to CC. It's going to make sure that you know. Go and click confirm. And when it's done, you'll see that 21 contacts were sent to constant contact. Now, the way we can view this in constant contact, you go ahead and jump over here, is you can go to the contacts. Just let it load. And you click on activity. Now, activity will let you know what information is coming in from the outside. So you can see right here, imported from external applications, only 20 contacts were brought in out of those 21. And that's because my account doesn't have an email associated with it. So it's going to send in just the ones that have email. So you can see right here that we've imported 20 of these were updated, no new. And we can go see that on a list. So we're going to go look at the Oracle list, which would be underneath your email tab. Let's this is going to be a bit hard to find. But when you open up one, you can go ahead and see all the new names that get put in. One question came in, Ted. If you delete somebody uh, from a target list in Sugar, do they get removed from constant contact as well? Yes, they do. So when you do delete one, so let's go ahead and try that right here. So we're going to go ahead and unlink this one from the Oracle test list. So when you unlink it, it's going to put a flag on the system to know that this needs to be deleted. When we go ahead and we run a sync to a constant contact, it's going to go ahead and remove that from that particular list. Now, since this contact that I unlinked already exists in constant contact and is associated with other target lists, you're not going to see it underneath the removal because the removal is going to be when you actually delete a contact completely from constant contact. So if you have a customer or a contact that's on a single list and you no longer want them there in your constant contact, you can remove it through Sugar. Okay, great. Hopefully that answered your question. And then we had a, a, another follow-up question on uploading a large list. What mm -hmm. you know when you're when you're using this integration, what's a what's the best practice? Do you just upload it as a target list in Sugar and then sync it to Constant Contact, or do you upload it to Constant Contact and then let the Sugar sync run on its own from there? What do you recommend? Well, it really would depend on where your names are from. So if you have all your names that you want to have this big list for and if they already exist in Sugar, go ahead and add all those names to a target list in Sugar and sync that list up to Constant Contact. If all your names exist in Constant Contact but don't exist in Sugar, then go ahead and add them to the list and sync that list down. So it just kind of depends on where the source of all your names are. And there's really no limit to how many names. The limit's very high from what I've been told. The limit's up at like 10,000 names per list. And we've had customers go over that. It just takes the sync a little bit longer when you get very large lists. But it just really honestly depends on where those names come from. So if you had, if you want to sync all your contacts to constant contact, you didn't you just have a, just a blank generic list that you want to sync it to, yeah, you can go ahead and create a, sorry, let me go back here. You could create a, like, a generic list. And when you do this, you want to make sure you tag the sync list details to CC. Go ahead and click Save. So that little checkbox tells us that we want to have all our information added to that constant contact. 
And you can just go into contacts, link existing records. You can just click select all records. Just select it all, 20 records. So in my case, I guess I only have 20 on mine. So then after this, you'd go ahead and click sync to CC. Obviously, this is a much smaller list than some of you will probably have. We see a completed updated list on constant contact, 20 contacts sent. You can go back over here and hit the refresh on our activity. We see that we have again 18 new brought in. Let's go look at that email list. And we want to look for generic. The list, may, the list name may have not come over just yet, but we can still see in our contacts list that it has been synced. Sometimes Constant Contact doesn't quite update their website as quickly as it does the contacts. Either way, that is the way you'd want to do it from Sugar to Constant Contact. And on Constant Contact, you would just create a new list, add all the users, and then you'd come over to Sugar and you'd go to the admin page. the events and you click the run sync. And this would go and grab all the lists and all the users, which would include your brand new list on Constant Contact, which would have your huge number of contacts. So that's how you do it if you started in Constant Contact. You create the list here, add all the names, come over to the advanced tab of the configuration page and click the run sync. And that would sync not only that new list, but also any updates to any of the previous lists that you have on Constant Contact. And to do it from Const Sugar to Constant Contact, you create the list in target lists, add all users, and click the sync to CC. Or you could or you could wait for the automatic sync to occur, which happens every two hours. I hope that's answered that question. The only thing I could show you at the moment would be the mapping tab. And this is where you could specify a specific field in Sugar that you want to map to a CC field. Now, Constant Contact allows for custom fields, and they have up to 15, and in Constant Contact, you'll show up as custom field number one, number two, number three, so on and so forth. So if you wanted to add more information to your record, so for instance, every contact has a, a record owner or who the contact's assigned to, you could do the assigned to username, phone number, email. So those are the out-of-the-box ones right here. So if you needed extra information to get tagged along with a contact that's being sent to Sugar. This is where you'd go through and you'd map the field and click Save. And then in Constant Contact, the custom field one would get the assigned username field or the phone number or email. So this is a way for you to map additional information to Constant Contact. And I think that's most of it. So yes, the only thing I would mention for the Sugar admins who are here listening to just be aware that some of these settings will cause to do a full sync. So again, these are force full sync. There's three options there. So when you trigger these, when you click on these, it will tell the integration to start from the very beginning and sync through everything, regardless if it's been updated or not. So just be aware as a sugar admin that if you're gonna go through and you need to do this, to do this preferably at the end of the day or on a weekend to give your integration time to not only do that, but also so it doesn't slow down your sugar instance and impair your users. So again, these just trigger a full sync, which is to everything on your constant contact. So if you have a large number of contacts, we have a, we have a client of ours that has about 25,000 contacts. So when they do a full sync, they need to do it at the end of the day or on a weekend just to make sure that when they use sugar, it's not being slow because it is all happening on the same server. So just keep that in mind if you want to do that. All right, great. Thank you, Todd.